for reform. Fourth, in my opinion, we have several important agendas before us. The Secretary General and the United Nations General Assembly can take the lead by undertaking necessary measures for the fulfillment of our shared goals on the basis of the following. One, restructuring the United Nations in order to transform this world body to an efficient and fully democratic organization capable of playing an impartial, equitable, and effective role in international relations. Reforming the structure of the Security Council, especially by abolishing the discriminatory privilege of the veto right, restoring the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people by organizing a referendum and free elections in Palestine in order to prepare a conducive uh, environment for all Palestinians, including Muslims, Christians, and Jews, to live together in peace and harmony, putting an end to all types of interferences in the affairs of Iraq and Afghanistan, in the Middle East, and in all countries in Africa, Latin America, Asia, and Europe. My friends, as our great prophet said, a government may survive with blasphemy, but never with oppression. Oppression against Palestinians and the violation of their rights still continue. A new group of Palestinians who lived in Al Ghusl Sharif were again forced out of their homes as the destruction of their residential homes continues by the occupiers and usurpers. Bombings in Afghanistan and Pakistan have not yet stopped, and the Guantanamo prison has not yet been shut down, and there are still secret prisons in Europe. The continuation of the present situation adds to hostilities and violence. Oppression and military aggression must be stopped. Regrettably, official reports concerning the brutalities of the Zionist regime in Gaza have not all been published. The Secretary General and the United Nations have crucial responsibilities in this respect, and the international community is impatiently waiting for the punishment of the aggressors and the murderers of the defenseless people of Gaza. Two, reforming the current economic structures and setting up a new international economic order based on human and moral values and obligations. A new course is needed, in fact, that would help promote justice and progress worldwide by flourishing the potentials and talents of all nations, thus bringing well-being for all and for future generations. Three, reforming the international political relations based on the promotion of lasting peace and friendship, eradication of arms race and elimination of all nuclear chemical and biological weapons to pave the way for all nations to have access to advanced and peaceful technologies for the advancement of human beings. Four, reforming cultural structures, respect for diverse customs and traditions of all nations, fostering moral values and spirituality aimed at strengthening the institution of a warm family, which is the backbone of all human societies. Five, worldwide efforts to protect the environment and full observance of the international agreements and arrangements to prevent the annihilation of nature's non-renewable resources. Fifth, our nation has successfully gone through a glorious and fully democratic election opening a new chapter for our country in the march towards national progress and enhanced international interactions. 
they entrusted me once more with a large majority with this heavy responsibility and now I want to declare that our great nation that has made great contributions to world civilization and the Islamic Republic of Iran as one of the most democratic and progressive governments in the world is ready to mobilize all its cultural political and economic capabilities to engage in a constructive process aimed at addressing international concerns and challenges and confronting the challenges that face human society. Our country that builds cultures has been a main victim of terrorism itself, blind form of terrorism and the target of an all-out military aggression during the first decade of its revolution. All through the past 30 years, we have been subject to hostile attitudes of those who once supported with all their might Saddam's military aggression and his use of chemical weapons against us and then decided another day in time to take military action in Iraq to get rid of the same man. Today, our nation seeks to create a world in which justice and compassion prevail. We announce our commitment to participate in the process of building durable peace and security worldwide for all nations based on justice, spirituality, and human dignity while being dedicated to strongly defending our legitimate and legal rights. To materialize these goals, our nation is prepared to warmly shake all those hands which are honestly extended to us. No nation can claim to be free from the need to change and reform in this journey towards perfectness. We welcome real and humane changes and stand ready to actively engage in fundamental global reforms. Therefore, we emphasize that the only path to remain safe is to return to monotheism and justice and this is the greatest hope and opportunity in all ages and generations. Without belief in God and commitment to the cause of justice and fight against injustice and discrimination, the world structure will not be corrected. Man is at the center of the universe. The man's unique feature is his humanity, the same feature which seeks justice, piety, love, knowledge, awareness, and all other high values. These human values should be supported and each and every fellow human should be given the opportunity to acquire them. Neglecting any of them is tantamount to the omission of a constituting piece of humanity. These are common elements which connect all human communities and constitute the basis of peace, security, and friendship. Divine religions pay attention to all aspects of human life, including obedience to God, morality, justice, fighting oppression, and endeavor to establish just and good governance. The prophet Abraham called for the oneness of God against Namrud, as Prophet Moses did the same against the Pharaohs, and Jesus Christ and the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon them all, did against the oppressors of their own time. They were all threatened to death and were forced out of their homelands. Without resistance and objection, the injustices would not be removed from the face of earth. And the last point that I'd like to make 